Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Okay, I'm just going to wait for the others, uh, like a minute, because you know that we are finally on the last week. So we are already on the last week of this course. So I am just uh, want to say welcome to this new session. Uh, you know that we are going to work on uh, different topics uh, this week. Uh, we are going to have four days as the previous weeks and we are at the end of this journey so we are going to begin with uh, with these last four days uh, we are just going to work on the section number five that is the last section of the platform and also we are going to work on the final exam so in that final exam you are going to uh, use all the knowledge that you have about the topics that we were developing through this course. I know that some of you have completed that activities already or the others that um, didn't have enough time to complete the activities. You know that you have this last week to complete all the uh, activities that you have on the platform. Uh, today is the last day in which I'm going to show you the phrase of the week. So we're going to see what is this phrase about and also what is the message that this phrase can give to all of us uh, because it's related to the things that we are living in our life. So I think it's um kind of uh, like good to see this kind of phrases uh, every single day and I'm not just talking about um, to feel that everything is all right all the time because that is not the point of the life you need to, to understand that sometimes we have different situations in which we feel uh, bad or things uh, are going bad because uh, we are like doing a lot of things in our job, in our daily life. So that's very normal that we have really bad days, but also we need to try in our minds to see something good in every day. And why is this important for us? Because uh, if we are living a really bad situation, we need to see something that make you feel hopeful for the future. So need to, to search something that make you feel like you are in the way and the current way in which you are going to like solve the problems that you are living. If the thing is really, really, really bad, remember that uh, in some moments you are going to find something good about this life and about the situation that we are living. And then you are going to find like the piece that you need in your mind and in your heart. So that's why I use this image. Train your mind to see something good in every day. So now, uh, remember that we have different topics that we were developing in this um, module. And now we are going to talk about the uh, tenses. So in this case, I'm going to make a whole review of the tenses that we have in English. And why I am doing this? Because I know that in some cases we need this kind of information or this kind of feedback when we are learning a language. So we are going um, to make a feedback, but also we are going to reinforce the information that we have related to the different tenses that we have in English. 
Uh, so in this case, if you have some questions about one of the tenses, you can make it. But also I'm going to try to be um, very specific, very clear. Uh, I'm going to try to make this information easy to understand. And also if you need, um, I mean, if you know this information already, this is going to be like a reinforcement of the things that you already know. Vamos a hacer un refuerzo eh, sobre lo que son los diferentes tiempos en inglés. Eh, va a ser un refuerzo, va a ser eh, un repaso, va a ser, I don't know, different things. Vamos a hacer diferentes cosas con esta información. Eh, we are going to begin with the present. We are not going to talk about the past, but because we need you to know all the tenses that we have in present. Then I'm going to use past. It is normal that we use past first, but in this case, I'm going to use the present first. So we are going to begin with general information that we already know about the tenses in English. And also then we are going to like specify every single of these tenses. So. The first thing that we need to remember, because we don't need to, to know, because this information, uh, you already learn about uh, the tenses, so that is not like the first time that you see something like this. So there are three main verbs, uh, tenses in English. You know that we have three different uh, tenses in English. In this case, we are talking about past, present, and future. And in this case, which uh, each of these have various forms and uses. So in this case, uh, we can say that every verb tense has four different parts. Cada uno de estos en su mayoría tiene cuatro partes extras. Así que vamos a hacer un review de las cuatro partes que componen el present. Um, so we are going to explore the four different aspects of the present tense. The present simple, the present continuous, the present perfect, and the present perfect continuous. So in this case, I'm going to write here the topic. And I'm going to use here present tense. But I'm going to make this a little bit bigger for you, like this. OK. So we are going to talk about the uh, present tense, uh, the things that we can talk about in this uh, tense. Also, we are going to see some elements related to the tense and uh, the things that we need to, to use when we are talking about the present. And also, in which cases we can like add more information about this one. So um, we are going to talk about the different parts of the tense. So I was saying that in these uh, sections, uh, I mean, in these sessions, we are going to talk about the present simple, uh, we are going to talk about the present continuous, Present perfect. Y también vamos a hablar de lo que es el present perfect continuous. Okay, we're going to divide these uh, uh, sessions into this information. So, um, in this case, we are going to talk about the present simple or the present continuous in the same session. And in the other, we are going to talk about the other two. Maybe, or maybe we are going to talk about the different uh, tenses. And also we are going to have a more information for tomorrow. And then we are going to talk about another tense. Because I'm going to talk about the present and past tenses. And if you can see that we have eight of these ones. So we have eight different parts of the present and past tense. So we are going to talk about all of them. So 
what is the information that we are going to use for these tenses? In this case, we are going to talk about the different structures that we can use for the different tenses. Um, we are going to see also uh, the different form. Uh, we are going to use the uh, or talk about the uses and examples about the the different parts of the present. And um, I'm going to send to you a video, but in this case, we're not going to see the video on the session uh, because it's uh, a material that we cannot share in this kind of uh, meetings. Uh, so I'm going to send the video to the group uh, of WhatsApp and you can see what is this video about because we are going to talk about the daily routines of the queen. And in that case, um, you need to watch the video and try to think of the correct answer. And we are going to like see the answers on the on the video because it's like um, an activity that is related to the present symbol. So in that case, we are going to see like three or four different things related to, to the topic. And we are going to apply the information also because you are going to see this kind of videos that will help you with the information that we have. So we are going to look at these four different tenses in present and then we can make the activities later. And we are going to start with the number one that it says that we have four present tenses in English. And we are going to see how they are used in a statement. Vamos a comenzar primero con unos ejemplos de los cuatro, eh, de los cuatro, de las cuatro partes que tenemos en presente. En este caso solo nos va a servir para hacernos una idea de la estructura que podemos ver en, en cada uno de ellos. So, we are going to see the examples. And we have for the present simple, we have the following uh, example. I play basketball. I'm going to move this one for this place. That's better. Present continuous. I am playing basketball. Estamos utilizando la misma oración, solo que le vamos a agregar los elementos clave que requiere cada una de las de los tiempos o cada una de las estructuras de este present tense. I am playing basketball. Next one, present perfect. In this one, I have played basketball. And in present perfect continuous, we have, I have been playing, I have been playing basketball. So through these examples, we can see what are the structures that we are going to follow in each of these parts of the tense. I know that in some cases, we are very familiar with these examples of with these structures, but as I was saying at the beginning, this is just a review. This is just a reinforcement of the information. So in this case, we're just going to find the different elements that we need to remember about the structures. En esta parte solo es para que nosotros eh, vayamos a hacer como un refuerzo de lo que ya conocemos, de las partes que ya hemos estudiado anteriormente, tal vez no en este eh, curso, sino que en otros anteriores. Y esto solo nos va a ayudar a mantener la información clara en nuestra cabeza, ¿verdad? Acuérdense que eh, cuando leemos, cuando vemos videos, cuando escuchamos eh, conversaciones, se utilizan este tipo de estructuras. 
Y esto no va a servir nada más para mantenerlo claro, ¿verdad? Y saber, ah, esa estructura se puede formar de esta, de esta, de esta forma. So that's why we are making this kind of reinforcement. I know that the basic one is the present simple. That is the easy one. Then we have the present continuous that is not like very complicated, but it's like interesting to see. And then we have the present perfect and present perfect continuous that in this case, following the structures, we are going to master this information. So in this case, it's very easy. <clears throat> It's not going to be very complicated to understand all the information that I have for you. No. Miss, en español no, podría indicar el tiempo. En español. El tiempo en que se utiliza. Ajá. El, I have played es como he jugado y el I have been había estado jugando. Vaya, en este caso, acuérdense que todos estos tienen influencia en el presente. Ahí sí, tenemos que, eh, pues básicamente, entender que a pesar de que íbamos en ese caso, como en el present perfect, y que llevamos una estructura eh, en el que pues tenemos un verbo en pasado, en este caso pues está utilizado para conectar. Ahí sí, estamos conectando el pasado con el presente. Quiere decir que hay como una influencia. Eh, y en algunos casos el tiempo no se especifica. En este caso de tal vez yo había estado jugando básquetbol, no dice en qué momento. Eh, puede ser en la mañana, puede ser eh, tal vez hace un par de minutos, eh, tal vez hace unas horas, o incluso puede ser como quizás eh, un poco de tiempo un poco más largo, solo que no se especifica exactamente en qué momento se jugó básquetbol. Pero sí se utiliza para el presente porque hace una conexión entre esa acción en el pasado y lo que está ocurriendo en este momento en el presente. En el siguiente, que es el Present Perfect Continuous, eh, básicamente es para hablar de una acción que empezó en el pasado. Siempre tiene influencia en el pasado, pero quizás no ha sido finalizada y pues tiene continuidad ahora en el presente. E igual, eh, nos enfocamos más que todo en el proceso y pues obviamente también en el resultado, pero como en este caso no está completo, ¿verdad? El resultado. Y puede estar continuando, ¿verdad? Este proceso puede continuar y o oh, en algunos casos, ¿verdad? Según la, lo, los ejemplos, en algunos casos puede que eh, esté llegando a su final o que recientemente haya llegado a su final. Entonces, básicamente estos últimos dos están influenciados por el uso del pasado también, pero no se enfocan básicamente en el pasado, sino que en el inicio de la acción y la continuación de ella en el presente. Pero ya vamos a, a ir como aclarando estas partes, ¿verdad?, eh, con la información que tengo, porque básicamente es una información un poco más sencilla para que entendamos mejor el uso de, de, estos, uh, de estas partes del, del presente, ¿verdad? Porque a veces podemos llegar a confundirnos por este uso de las estructuras, así como en el caso de la, del present perfect, that we are, uh, are using a, a verb in past, but in this case we are using an auxiliary that's in present. So we're going to, to see what is the information. So we're going to begin with the first one. That in this case is the present simple. I was saying that this one is the easy one because it's one of the most used tenses in English as the simple past. So in that case are the, the, the most used tenses that we have in English. So we're going to begin with the number one. We're going to divide this one in numbers. So. Present simple. What is the information that we have about the present simple? Well, in this case, this is just like to remember. Um, it's usually the first tense uh, that you 
learn when you are acquiring the language. En muchos de los casos, eh, esta es como la primera estructura que nosotros aprendemos cuando estamos eh, en este proceso, ¿verdad? Del inglés, del idioma. Eh, porque puede llegar a ser como el más sencillo de entender. So, that's why we learned this tense first. Because you are um, understanding the use of the pronouns, you are understanding the use of the, um, the verbs, you learn about the verbs, then you learn how to create statements, uh, the structure, the form, how many words, and different things. So that's why um, in some cases is the first uh, tense that we learn when we are uh, studying English. And you can uh, use it to talk about yourself and other people. Of course, we are going to talk about ourselves or maybe we are going to talk about someone else. And also we are going to talk about things. That is the main thing here because uh, in some cases we are just talking about things. And that occurs habitually in the present. Of course, in this case, we are going to be very uh, careful because the present simple in almost all the time, we are just going to talk about actions that are in the present time. In this case, we are not going to talk about uh, the influence or the past or maybe the beginning of the action in the present and this one is going to end in the future. In this case, we are just going to uh, have this precise moment so in this case, we are going to express the things that we are living in this moment. So what is the form? What is the form that we can use for the present simple? In this case, the base form of the verb is the same for every subject pronoun, except for the third person in which you are going to add S. In este, in este caso, ya esto ya lo conocemos que pues obviamente vamos a utilizar the base form of the verb. Base form of the verb. And we are going to add S to the third person singular. Okay, this is like the most like important information that we have here. And we are going to make different statements with the verb eat. In this case, I'm going to make positive statements, negative statements, and I'm going to make questions. Vamos a hacer las tres cosas, ¿verdad? Positivos, negativos y preguntas con el mismo verbo, con el verbo comer. Esa va a ser nuestra base. Y voy a utilizar, obviamente, todos los pronombres que tenemos, o por lo menos los que no se repitan, ¿verdad? Entonces, vamos a ver estos ejemplos utilizando simplemente el verbo comer. So, I'm going to insert this one. Seven. Like this. Ok. Here we have the affirmative, negative, and question. Okay, we're going to begin with the first one, I eat. And in this case, when we're using like the present uh, simple, uh, we can use just this kind of very short sentences. It's valid to use this kind of information when we are beginning with this uh, process. But when we are like being very familiar with the information and with the structures, we can transform all of this information into bigger ideas. But in this case, it's just as an example. I know that you can create uh, questions like are very longer in this case or that have more information but this is just like an example you can begin with this information that i eat and we can add different things like for example 
I eat a banana every morning because uh, the doctor said that it's good for my health. And you have a very long statement, but you are using this base. Now, the next one, you eat, of course, we have he, she, et, y volvemos a la regla, it. Then we have the plurals, we, you, and they. Y agregamos el verbo, it, it, and it. And that's it. That is the base of this sentence. Now, for the negatives, remember that we need to use the auxiliary. That is one of the important things that we need to remember always. In this case, when we're making negatives, we're going to use the auxiliary to plus a negative word that in this case is not. So I'm going to create, I do not eat. Or I mean, you don't eat. And in this case, remember that we are going to use the auxiliary. And in this case, the auxiliary is going to take the rule of the third person. So we're going to use the auxiliary does, and then our main verb is going to be in a base form. Doesn't eat like this. We don't eat. You don't eat. They don't eat. And for the questions, we're just going to add. We're not going to change. In this case, we're going to add. Um, en este caso, como no estamos utilizando el verbo to be, no voy a hacer preguntas con el verbo to be. Voy a utilizar la WH question where. Y vamos a utilizar también el auxiliar tú. Quiere decir que en este caso voy a utilizar estos dos elementos junto con los dos elementos que ya tengo en las afirmativas. Entonces, where, luego el auxiliar do, pronombre I, verbo, it. Where do I eat? Next one. Where do you eat? Where does he, she, or it eat? I mean, next one we have the uh, the next pronoun. Where do we eat? Where do you eat? Y por último, where do they eat? Easy as that. Okay, in here we have like the base, the roof, the, the easy part of this statement. But I need you to make this one um, a better thing. So, I'm going to give you five minutes and you are going to use just the positive sentences. Vamos a utilizar solo la parte de las afirmativas, de las positivas, donde tenemos la base. I eat, you eat, he, she eat, eat, we eat, you eat, and they eat. Esa base ustedes la van a transformar en oraciones más largas y complejas. Estamos hablando del presente simple. Vamos a mantenernos en el presente simple, pero vamos a hacer oraciones más largas. Ahora, 
ustedes pueden agarrar uno de esos eh, pronombres y hacer su oración. If you can use uh, he, you can use he, we, you, whatever pronoun that you want to, to work with. Ahora, van a tomar uno de los pronombres con el verbo it, vamos a mantenernos en el verbo it, y vamos a alargarla, vamos a poner la información extra a esa oración. Así que tienen cinco minutos para pensar en su oración, cómo transformarla, qué información le van a agregar. Luego me la escriben en el chat, la vamos a estar leyendo y la vamos a estar colocando debajo del cuadro. So in this case, we are, not, uh, are going to use our knowledge to create this statement. So we have... 8.26, we are going to use five minutes, in this case, almost, almost 27, if I am not wrong. Uh, 8.32, like this, a las 8.32 aproximadamente. So, let's go to the statement. If you have the sentence already, you can begin writing, don't worry.
Okay, we have some um some statements here, so we am going to begin uh, writing some of them on the, the document because we have a very good examples of the use of the base of the information that we have on the document, but adding more information that is related to the structure that we are using in this moment. So we're going to begin with the number one, but in this case, I'm going to, as always, make a list of the example. But in this case, I'm going to like change a little bit the number one because um, I think it is not true at the end of the statement. So I'm going to change a little bit this one. I eat fruit uh, in the morning, in this case, in the morning, and vegetables in the afternoon. Because it is healthy. Like this is better. Because it is not true. I am sure about that. So next one. She eats apple and bananas. So in this case, we are going to like, yes, she eats an apple and banana in the morning because it's, it is healthy. She eats up an apple and a banana in the morning. It is healthy. Next one. In this case, we're changing a little bit the use of the pronouns. Very good. One eats oranges, watermelon, and watermelon in this case, uh, because we have just two things. It's orange and watermelons because it's very healthy, okay? Uh -huh. Carlos eats, because you are using a third person, Carlos eats fruit like peaches or bananas in the morning. Okay. I eat eggs and beans in the morning because the breakfast is important. Very good. Very, very good. The idea and the statements. The, the breakfast is the most important food or the most important part of uh, the day because we are going to gain a lot of energy through the um the things that we're eating in the morning. Next one. Okay, we have a negative one here. I don't eat chocolate in the morning, but I do in the afternoon. I don't eat chocolate in the morning, but I do in the afternoon. 
Okay. He eats vegetables and fruit in the morning. Luisa eats pizza every weekend because it is, in this case, we are going to apply the uh, the pronoun because you are talking about something. So in this case, you are going to say because it is her favorite food. It's, oh, in this case, um, cuando utilicemos este tipo de oraciones, así como en esta, donde dice Luisa come pizza todos los fines de semana porque... Aquí volvemos a repetir la información que ya tenemos. Entonces, porque la pizza es su comida favorita. Entonces, para no volver a decir pizza en pizza, vamos a agregar el pronombre que corresponde a esa, eh, en este caso es una comida. Entonces, agregamos el um, pronombre que corresponde al objeto. Para no redundar, entonces lo cambiamos y ponemos it is her favorite food. Con el iris nos referimos a la pizza. Entonces, eh, también hay que regular estos, estos uh, formas en las que escribimos las oraciones. Okay, next one. She eats a lot of meat and pasta because that makes her happy. Okay. In this case, it's related to the action of eat this kind of um food. Okay, next one. We eat in the best restaurant of the city. Okay. We eat in the best restaurant of the city. Very good. Um, he, huh, okay. Okay. Right, we have different um, statements um, in this case. So you can see what are like the elements that you can you can add from a simple statement. Era una frase simple, ¿verdad? El come, tú comes, nosotros comemos, ellos comen. And you are adding more information to the uh, base of this sentence. So that is the important thing here that you are applying your information to this kind of a very very short or very simple uh, words because if we just use the words as we have on the examples we are just on the basic very basic level um in this moment but you are like demonstrating that you have this knowledge about the use of these structures so that is the step to change from basic to intermediate in this case. So that's why we're making this kind of exercises. That it can uh, look very simple, but at the end it's just to understand in which places are the, the failures or the mistakes. And we can like correct that uh, kind of things. Esto es simplemente para que vayamos viendo las partes en las que tal vez cometemos un par de errores o en las que tal vez no nos hemos detenido a pensar, ¿verdad? Porque a veces sucede que lo escribimos rápido y a veces después decimos, ay, se me fue un pequeño error, ¿verdad? Entonces, ahí es para que estemos como very focused. Now, what are the uses that we can give to the simple present? In this case, we have different uses, and also we are going to see an example for each use. So, in the use number one, we have habits. Vamos a hablar de los hábitos. 
And we have the example, I sometimes go to the gym. In this case, we are also using the a adverse of frequency. I sometimes go to the gym. I never eat fish. That is another example. I never eat fish. So, when we are talking about habits, we are going to use the adverbs of frequency. Vamos a utilizar estos adverbios de frecuencia, ya que estamos hablando de un hábito que tenemos. Entonces, ahí vamos a aplicar incluso el uso del tiempo, cuántas veces nosotros realizamos esta acción, ¿verdad? Entonces, eh, a veces es bastante común utilizar los adverbs of frequency. Number two, general truths. Aquí habla de verdades generales. And we have an example. London is the capital of England. So in this case, it's something that you cannot um, like change about. Es una idea que no podemos cambiar, ¿verdad? Que es una, una realidad, una verdad. Y que pues ha estado así desde hace mucho tiempo, que va a seguir así mucho tiempo. Entonces, lo utilizamos para dar eh, este tipo de ideas generales, pero que son verdad y que no se pueden como cambiar, ¿verdad? En el momento en que nosotros digamos la información. Number three. Eh, repeated actions or events. A repeated action of events, I mean. And we have the examples. We drive to work every day. We drive to work every day. Estamos hablando de la repetición de acciones de los eventos. Eh, esto es algo que hacemos todos los días. Entonces, es una acción que se repite every single day. We try to work every day. Number four, fix arrangements or timetables. The examples, the bus leaves at 6.30 p.m. Ok, aquí estamos hablando de eh, horas o fechas específicas, ya que... Uh, Habla de, de algo que va a suceder en un momento en específico. Entonces, tenemos que el bus se va a las 6.30. Y en este caso, puede ser que el bus lo haga siempre a esa hora, porque esa es su hora, ¿verdad?, eh, de salida. Entonces, son eh, fixed arrangement or time tables. Then, we have also eh, the present simple to talk about feelings, opinions, and beliefs. Okay, in this case, we're talking about our feelings, the opinions that we have about something, or the beliefs that we have in our life. So that's why we use this structure. And this one said, I love sandwiches. I love sandwiches. That is a feeling. This one, I hope to see you soon. I hope
I hope to see you soon. That is a belief. Eh, tenemos sentimientos, tenemos opiniones, tenemos... Eh, en este caso, creencias. Así que ahí podemos aplicar un poco la información que tenemos sobre esto. Next one, instructions. Para dar in instrucciones también. And in this case, it said, Ok, en este caso es cuando estamos dando una instrucción o estamos siguiendo una instrucción. First, put the water in the pot, then bring to a boil. Pon agua en el caso, podemos decir, ¿verdad? Eh, luego llévalo a hervir. So, in that case, it's following some uh, instructions and we are going to use the present simple because... Um, We're not going to say someone eh, that made this eh, recipes on the past. No, no aplica, ¿verdad? Hacer estas eh, recetas en el pasado, sino que tenemos que hablar del presente porque se está haciendo en ese momento que la persona está leyendo, pues, las instrucciones. Now, we are going to see something about the present continuous. Remember that uh, after the class, I'm going to send to you the video. That is the video practice. Después de la clase, les voy a mandar el video de práctica para que ustedes lo tengan en el grupo. Ahora vamos a hablar de la siguiente estructura, que es el present continuous. Number two. Okay, we're going to see the first thing. What is the form of this structure? And it says that we use the verb to be plus the base verb plus ing, sometimes called the gerund or past or present participle. Este es el gerundio, el ing, el presente participio, as many names that we have about this structure. In this case, we're going to use the verb sleep. Para este, vamos a utilizar el verbo sleep pero vamos a um, no hacer el cuadro, sino que vamos a poner un par de ejemplos de cómo utilizaríamos el verbo sleep en este present continuous form. So, we're just going to have some examples. I am, aquí vamos a aplicar el verbo to be, am, luego la base del verbo con el ing, sleeping. I am sleeping. You are sleeping. Now, some in negative. In this case, we're not using the, um, the auxiliary do. In this case, we're using just the verb to be. No vamos a utilizar el auxiliar do, sino que vamos a enfocarnos en el verbo to be. So, in negative, I am not sleeping. And you are not sleeping. And in questions, in this case, we are going to use the verb to be as the question word. We are not going to use the WA question. We are not going to use the auxiliary. In this case, we are just going to use 
the verb to be as a question. So am I sleeping? Are you sleeping? So in this case, we have like the structure of this one. Aquí ya tenemos nuestra estructura. Eh, tenemos, ¿verdad? Que vamos a utilizar el verbo to be. Ahora sí, nos enfocamos en el verbo to be. Y luego utilizamos nuestro verbo en forma base. Pero a ese verbo en forma base le vamos a hacer un pequeño trans, una transformación. Y le vamos a poner lo que es el ing. Obviamente tiene un cierto... Eh, cambios, ¿verdad? Cuando utilizamos el ING en algunos de los verbos. Pero en este caso solo vamos a, a ver más que todo la estructura. Ahora, con la pregunta, ustedes ya saben que no estamos utilizando lo que es el WH question ni los auxiliares, sino que simplemente tomamos el verbo to be y lo posicionamos al principio de nuestra pregunta oración y transformamos a una question. So we are going to continue with the uses and examples. And also we are going to see something about the study verbs tomorrow. And then we are going to uh, continue with the present perfect simple or present simple perfect different names. And with the present perfect continue. But in this case, we are going to do it tomorrow because it's almost time to end this session. So remember that you need to work on the uh, platform. Tell me, Jorge. Uh, I have a question, teacher. Tell um, me. Yes? Send the mic. Tell me. It's send the mic of my. My. It's Mother's Day. Ah, on, okay. On Wednesday, we're not going to have the session because it's uh, the celebration of Mother's Day. Vamos a tener la, la sesión el miércoles hasta el día jueves y luego terminamos viernes. Thanks. You're welcome. So, we are going to end the session here and we are going to see each other tomorrow. Have a really good night and see you tomorrow. Bye. See you. Catch you later. See you. Good night. Good night. Bye bye.